51 through 57. I want to just take just, just a little bit to um, look at the stuff before that, if you guys had any questions. Today we're going to spend uh, um, a lot of time talking about um, several things. Um, how to simplify this, what the discriminant tells us, tells us several different things, tells you know its implications on graphing, lots of different things. <coughs> um, and then hopefully we can get to an application or two, we'll have to see. Um, so before we get to that, anything you want to look at on 292 before, on the 20 through 48? Yeah. 24, 292, number 24. Okay. So write, a, write an equation in standard form with the given roots. Okay. So um, on this one, um, let me get to here. Um, so we're looking at 1 sixth and 5. Okay, so 5 obviously, if we look at a binomial, it's going to be x minus 5. Okay, what is it for 1 sixth? We could go x minus 1 sixth, okay, and that wouldn't be a, a bad thing, but oh man, I sure like to stay away from fractions when I can. So what could I have here that would give me 1 sixth? Well, actually, it's going to be 6x minus 1, okay? Because if I would look at that, you guys know that that's 1, one 6, and we're going to take a look at solving it, okay? So um, so that's probably how I would do it. In standard form, we, we don't really want any, um, any fractions or anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right to this. This is correct, and that'll work any time, okay? But this is just a little bit more elegant, and that's where they come up with the, um, the 6x squared. You get negative 1, negative that, so I get negative 31x, and then a plus 5, and I'm hoping I end up from there. Okay? Yep. So that's one thing that, say if I had, like, um, where I wanted a solution of x equals negative 3 halves, what binomial could I have? Help me out. Come on. 2x plus 3. Okay? So we need to be able to go back and forth. Granted, we're mostly going... Excuse me. We're mostly going this direction, going from a factored form with a binomial to finding the solution. Um, but there is some value to actually writing an equation that'll give us a certain result as well. Good question. <coughs> Man, anything else? Do you guys remember completing the square? All right. Good. Good. I remember right before break, you guys did a nice job with that. So. So, okay, before we do anything, I want to review a couple things. Okay? I want to review um, just different types of numbers. Okay? This is not something that's going to be on a quiz or anything, but today we're going to be talking a lot about rational, irrational. Um, so, let's just review what those things are. Okay? So, basically, <coughs> um, Different types of numbers. We start off with natural numbers. Camera. Oh yeah, camera. Okay. What I need to do is I need to get out here a little bit more so I can see it off the side. Okay. So we start off with natural numbers, and natural numbers are simply just one, two, three, four. All those numbers can be plotted on a number line. Um, really, pretty straightforward. Now, if we take a look at whole numbers. We're going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Um, and then we throw in negatives, which are integers. Um, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, okay? These sets are kind of unique in the sense that um, if I say, give me a number between 2 and 3, is there a natural number between 2 and 3? No, no. These sets are not what's called dense, okay? A density refers to can I find something else that's between it, okay? Um, so now if I move to something, something more, if I look at rational, 
Now remember what rational means. Rational, ratio, fraction. Anything that can be written as a fraction. Anything that can be written as a fraction. Okay? Different types of numbers. All these are obviously rational because I could put them all over one. Okay? But anything that's a decimal, uh, decimals might be rational, they might be irrational. Um, but if we have like three halves, that's rational. Um, zero is rational because zero over one. Uh, 0.76 is rational because it's 76 over 100, 76 hundredths. Okay. If I did something like 0.3 repeating, that's rational because it's one third. Good. Okay. Even if I did something like 0.73, that repeating, that's rational. Anything that's repeating is going to be rational in some way, shape, or form. That's just that's just all there is to it. Okay. Now, but if we look at a decimal that just doesn't um, doesn't have a pattern to it, it's irrational. When you think of irrational numbers, do you have an idea of? Can you think of an, a number that might be irrational? Pi. Pi is definitely irrational. Okay. Uh, 3.14159, there's no pattern whatsoever, okay? Other numbers that are irrational is like square root of 2 is also irrational, okay? Could we plot pi on a number line? Well, we don't have an exact, look, you know, we can kind of approximate where it's going to be, okay? So if I had a number line, I could go a 3, and I could go a 4, and then this right here, maybe that's pi. Okay, But I, it would be found somewhere on a number line. Okay, If I did square to 2, that's about 1.4. I could also put that on a number line. Okay, So when we get to talking about what this means as far as x-intercepts go, these numbers can all be plotted on a number line. These could be plotted on a number line. These could be plotted on a number line. So any of these type of numbers... It's okay if an x-intercept has a square root. That's all right. It's okay if an x-intercept is positive or negative or has a fraction. It's not a big deal. Okay? And the last number set that we took a look at that we haven't uh, listed here. Okay? All of these are real. Okay? And then outside of real are imaginary. Okay, imaginary anything that has eyes in it. Okay, and what type of things have eyes in it? Square roots of negatives. Okay, so if I had something like this, square root of negative 10, could I plot that on a number line? Just a regular number line. It has to be imaginary plane, so just not on a number line itself. Okay. So that's worth reviewing today because we're going to talk. We talk about sometimes it'll have rational answers, sometimes it'll have irrational answers, sometimes it'll have imaginary answers, yada yada yada. Okay. So um, let's go to the sheet. Fifty-one through fifty-seven. Okay. Now it's time to take a look at you know how you did on those, of course. Um, So what we have is, you know, we're going to be focusing a lot on the discriminant, okay? Um, okay, the discriminant is the part underneath the square root, so it is b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant does not involve the square root part itself, it's just what's underneath the, dis underneath the radical. Okay. What word does discriminant remind you of? A little bit determinant. I didn't think about that. <coughs> discriminate. Okay. Um, so <coughs> to discriminate, well, to discriminate is basically to just treat somebody differently based upon their a quality they might have, right? Okay. Um, like like uh, Sam's a blonde. I'm going to talk slower. Okay, something like that. Okay, which is obviously not true. Okay, um, because you're smart, you have the eyes great. Um, so, or or like you know, okay, um, 
you know, Carter, you're a male, so I'm, I don't want to ride with you at this point, because males are not very good drivers, okay? You know, those, those are basically de uh, decisions we're making that are basically just based upon a trait, okay? The discriminant in mathematics, well, the reason why I to call it discriminant is because based upon what traits this has determines a lot of things, okay? So based upon this, we're going to discriminate whether or not it has solutions or no solutions, imaginary solutions or one solution or two solutions, lots of different things, okay? So we're going to just go through these and kind of talk about them. Uh, you know, uh, a little bit here and there, and then we're going to make a make a list um, on the other sheet. So here we go. Discriminant here is zero. Okay, it's kind of unique. Okay, well, usually or usually quadratic formula has two solutions. Okay, in this case, when I simplify it, I just get five divided by two. I just get five. I only get one solution. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start a list over here. So we're going to say if b squared minus 4ac equals 0. And we're going to make a list of what this tells us. Okay. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, we're only going to get one solution. Okay. And what type of solution is that going to be? Well, if we look back here and we think about it, in this case we have 10 over 2, which is just 5. There's no radical. So what type of numbers are my solutions going to be? They're going to be real. okay? And not only that, they're going to be real, but they're also going to be rational. okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to get one solution, and it's going to be rational. Okay? By looking at the discriminant, we can tell, yes, one solution. It's going to be rational. Okay? Um, so, I'm going to kind of make some notes as we go. So this one, 52. Or, yeah, 52. It's like a negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 144 over 2. Well, I know the square root of 144. So I'm going to say uh, it's negative 4 plus or minus 12 over 2. <coughs> and then, I'm bless you, I'm going to go ahead and find both solutions here. So I get negative 4 plus 12 over 2 and negative 4 minus 12 over 2. So let's go like this. Negative 4 plus 12 is 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. I get negative 16 divided by 2, which is negative 8. Okay? So that tells me another thing, that if this is a perfect square, it tells me kind of what solutions I'm going to get. Okay? So let's go back and take a look at this. If um, well, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to hold off on that just for a second. I'm going to hold off on that just for a second. You'll see why. Next one. Negative three plus or minus square root of one fifty three. I don't know the square root of one fifty three. Dang it. But square root of 153 can be simplified because 9 goes into it. So here's what I'm going to do. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. Square root of, let's how many times does 9 go into that? Um, I hate to do this, but I'm going to, what, what is it? 17. 17, thank you. Okay. 9 square roots is uh, over 4, which gives me negative 3 plus or minus um, 3 square root of 17 all over 4. Okay? So here we have two situations. Here is a perfect square. Here it wasn't a perfect square. But then we have total, two totally different looking answers. But they do have something in common. Could I plot 4 and negative 8 on a number line? Yes. Okay? Could I plot these two numbers on a number line? If I if, Could I take my calculator and figure out what they are as decimals? Yeah, and I could plot them on a number line, right? So what happens is, if this number is positive, we're always going to get two real solutions. Going to my other sheet. OK? 
Okay, so if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, we're going to get two um, solutions. Okay. But this is going to be it's going to be broken up into two different things. Okay. So I'm going to do two different cases underneath here. If b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square, and if it is not a perfect square. So just like in those two situations we looked at. First one was 144. Okay. When is a perfect square, what type of answers do we get? Whole, and actually, sometimes it might be negative. Integers. And what's weird is later on, like say if this one was uh, like square root of uh, 9 and give me 3, I might get fractions, believe it or not. Okay. So they're going to be, in some way, shape, or form, rational. Okay? They're going to be rational answers. And if it's not a perfect square, I'm going to get irrational. And we'll come back to that here in just a little bit as well. Okay. So let's just go through and work with some of these real quick. 54. Since I see this is positive, I know I'm going to get two rational answers. Okay. Uh, or or two, two real answers, I should say. Um, and then I'm going to simplify this. Negative 19, because 625 is a perfect square, plus or minus 25 over 4. Gives me negative 19 plus 25 gives me 6 fourths, or 3 halves. Negative 19 minus 25 is it gives me 44, negative 44. So it gives me a negative 44 over 4, which is negative 11. Okay, and again, this was a perfect square, I get rational. Not a perfect square, irrational. Okay, but before we go any further, every single answer we've talked about before, so far, can be plotted on a number line. So let's go to some, a little bit different idea. Let me ask you this. Let's talk about graphing a little bit. If I'm looking at graphing a, a parabola, all these are parabolas because we're dealing with quadratics, does a parabola have to have x-intercepts? How could it not? Just top half, so the vertex is above and it opens up. Okay. What would that mean in this situation? My parabola is never equal to zero. My, my, my result is never equal to zero. And in this case, if we think about it, quadratic formula answers this question. When does it equal zero? Well, the ones we've done so far all have x-intercepts because our solution's five. There's only one solution. There's only one place where I get a result of zero. So what that would look like is at 5, it would have a vertex that lies right there on the axis. Okay? Only has one x-intercept. Okay? Um, if I have something like this next one, 4 and negative 8, what that would look like is I would have, I'm doing small little crappy graphs here, this would be 8, or no, 4 and negative 8, it would come down and it might look like this. Obviously, my scale is a little bit off. Okay? So here's what I want you to realize. One thing I want to put on this list as well. Let's go over to the side here and make another deal. How many x-intercepts does it have? Well, if I take a look here, 
one solution, one rational, it has one x-intercept. Two solutions, it'll have two x-intercepts. Okay? You know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to slide my two over here. I'm going to say two real. What time are we forced to again? 33. Okay. So anyway, so we've got the situation where my discriminant is zero, I only get one solution. Hence, only one x-intercept. Okay. If it's bigger than zero, I'll have two x-intercepts. It's going to hit at two different points. And if it's a perfect square, I'm going to get rationals, nice and pretty. And uh, in this case, it's going to be irrational. It's going to be ugly. Um, this right here, I'm going to put an asterisk next to it. And this right here, I'm going to put an asterisk next to that. And up here, I'm going to say, you know what this means? Um, it can factor. Okay. Things when we factor them, we get nice, clean um, answers, no radicals. So whenever you have a situation where there's nice, clean answers, no radicals, I could have factored it instead. Okay. So like this first one, yeah, I could have factored it. I would have ended up with x minus 5 times x minus 5. Here, 4 and 8, yeah, I could have factored it. I could, would have ended up with x minus 4, x plus 8. Okay, this one, could I have factored something like this and get answers like this? No, not at all. What about this one? Could I have factored and got answers like this? Yeah, and the reason why that is is because it was a perfect square, so there's a connection between whether or not we can factor and whether it's a perfect square. Okay, so 55. So now we've got this last situation. If I have a negative there, what's that tell us? Imaginary. How many imaginary answers? Well, in this case, there's going to be two. There's always going to be two imaginary solutions. Okay? So our last case scenario that we need to take a look at, if b squared minus 4ac, what's that called again, b squared minus 4ac, I forget. Discriminant. Okay? If it's less than zero, then I have two imaginary solutions. If I have two imaginary solutions, can I plot imaginary numbers on my x-axis? No. So what does that tell me about my x-intercepts? There's no, there's no x-intercepts. There's zero x-intercepts. Okay. So now let's go ahead and finish this real quick. So basically that's all the theory today. I just want to go through it. I want to uh, work on simplifying some things, and then we'll review some theory here by the end. Okay, so square root of negative 32, let's just re, re, uh, reduce this. So I get square root of 16, square root of negative 1, square root of 2, and I'm going to have 2, um, so 2 plus or minus 4i square root of 2 over 2. Okay, now we're going to work on simplifying this, um, especially with these bottom ones. But in order to divide by 2, I've got to divide everything by 2. When I say everything, what do I mean? I mean this term and that term. I don't mean what's inside the radical, what's outside the radical. I mean both terms. Both terms have to be, have to be divided by 2 if I'm going to simplify this. So it would be now 1 plus or minus 2i squared 2. And we're done. That's fully simplified for me. When they're asking for exact answers, that's what they want. Okay. Next one, 4 plus or minus square root of 0. Well, let's review. If that's 0, what's that tell us? One solution. And you should understand that without even looking at your notes, because if you think about it, plus 0, minus 0, I'm going to get the same thing twice. So I'm going to get one solution, and this is 1 half. Okay. Those are the easiest ones to simplify. Whenever your discriminant is zero, you're like, oh, thank you. It's easy to simplify. Next one, square root of, four, square root of negative 47. 
47 is a prime number. There's nothing I can do with that to take anything out. But in this case, we've got to take out the negative. So I get negative 5 plus or minus i squared to 47 all over 4. Honestly, in this situation, not a lot of applications are we really interested in the imaginary solution. We're just interested in, is my solution imaginary? If I try and solve a problem, um, a real world problem, they want to know, can this, be, can this happen? First thing I'm going to check is my discriminant. If my discriminant's negative, I'm going to stop and say it's not possible. Okay? Um, so sometimes it's nice to just check out your discriminant to start with. If you love factoring, if you're great at factoring, check out your discriminant, like on this one. Hey, 144. Hey, that's a perfect square. I'm going to factor it instead. But it's totally up to you. Okay? Okay. Let's work on simplifying these bottom three. This first one. Hey, 2 goes into everything. Can I just divide everything by 2? Can I just divide this square to 20 by 2 and make it square to 10? I can't, because I, I, I want a 2, not a square root of 2. So I can't cancel a 2 if it's inside the square root, so I've got to simplify. So in this case, it would be 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 over 6. I'm assuming you remember how to simplify square root of 20. Now can I simplify? Yes. I can divide the first term, the second term, by 2, and divide the bottom by 2. So I'd get 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 3. And I'm okay if you leave it like that. You don't have to split it up into two different fractions like you need to with um, complex numbers. Okay? Next one. 30 plus or minus square root of 10 over 10. Can I just cancel my 10s? No. And this one, the square root of 10, I can't simplify that. So if you're really bound and determined to simplify this a little bit, the only thing you can do is go 3 plus or minus square root of 10 over 10. That's the only thing you can do. Do you have to do that? No, you don't have to. If you realize this won't simplify, and if you want to leave your answer like that, I'm totally fine with that. No big deal. Okay? Last one. 10 plus or minus square root of 8 over 4. Simplify it on your own. Go. Simplify the square root of 8. And then simplify what you can. Okay, so I got 10 plus or minus 2 squared is 2 over 4. You guys remember how to simplify square root 8, right? So now if we simplify this, I'm going to take my first term and my second term. I'm going to divide them both by 2 since I can divide the bottom by 2. So I'm going to get 5 plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. Say, oh yeah, if you had that. Oh yeah, about everybody. Nice job. Okay, so kind of throwing some theory in here rather than just saying here's just here's quadratic formula go ahead and like find me my answers okay our and our discriminant tells us a lot of stuff it tells us whether we have x-intercepts no x-intercepts any solutions um, all that good stuff so um, we'll go back through that on Monday but just think about it. if it's positive I'm gonna have some solutions if it's zero oh, only one solution if it's negative they're gonna be imaginary solutions okay so, here's what we're going to take a look at. Page 270, 29 through 33. I'm going to do all of those. Thirty-five through forty-one odd. And then I think we're just going to tackle the multiple choice forty-nine through fifty.
Here we go.